Surveying Measurements The purpose of this section is to discuss the different types of surveying measurements, identify error sources, and describe procedures to minimize errors. And the five common types of survey measurements are horizontal distances, horizontal angles, vertical distances, vertical angles, and slope distances. And to give you some idea how vertical distance and horizontal distance look like, kindly refer in figure 3-1. Horizontal and vertical planes. Angles and distances are measured relative to either a horizontal or vertical plane. The horizontal plane is a level surface radiating outward from the point of observation and is perpendicular to the vertical axis. The vertical axis, or also known as the plumb line, is always parallel to the direction of gravity. The vertical plane runs in a direction parallel to the vertical axis and perpendicular to the horizontal plane. A vertical plane is established whenever the instrument rotates along the horizontal plane along the horizontal plane to face a new direction. Horizontal distances and angles. A linear measurement on the horizontal plane determines the horizontal distance between two points. However, the true horizontal distance is actually curved like the Earth's surface, as seen in figure 3-2. Due to this curvature, the direction of gravity is different at each point. Subsequently, vertical axes are not parallel to each other. The figure shows a representation of the curved surface and the parallel horizontal distance. Horizontal angles are measured on the horizontal plane and establish the azimuth of each survey measurement. An azimuth is a horizontal angle measured clockwise from a defined reference. Horizontal distance and angle measurements are then used to calculate the position of a point on the horizontal plane. Vertical distances and angles. Vertical distance or distances are measured along the vertical axis to determine the difference in height or elevation between points. Vertical angles are measured in the vertical plane either above or below the horizontal plane of the instrument. Zenith or zenith angles used as reference for measuring vertical angles are defined as 0 degree directly overhead and 90 degree at the horizontal plane. Slope distance. The slope distance is the shortest distance from the instrument to the target point. This distance is the hypotenuse of the horizontal and vertical distances. The horizontal and vertical distances can be calculated if the slope distance and vertical angle is known. In measuring, accuracy and precision must be observed. But what is accuracy and what is precision? Accuracy is the degree of conformity of a given measurement with a standard value, while precision is the extent to which a given set of measurements agree with their mean. Accuracy and precision are two different yet equally important surveying concepts. And these concepts are illustrated in figures 3-3 through 3-5 with a target shooting example. In figure 3-3, all five shots are closely grouped, indicating good precision due to the degree of repeatability. However, the accuracy is poor because the shots are far from the center of the target. In figure 3-4, the five shots appear randomly scattered about the target indicating neither accuracy nor precision. And in figure 3-5, all five shots are closely spaced about the target's center, indicating both precision and accuracy. The goal of any survey should be to produce accurate and precise observations. Often, measurements with greater accuracy and precision requirements employ multiple observations to minimize procedural errors. 
Each measurement should be reviewed to ensure compliance with defined survey standards before storing it. Errors A discrepancy is defined as the difference between two or more measured values of the same quantity. However, measurements are never exact and there will always be a degree of variance regardless of the survey instrument or method used. These variances are known as errors and will need to be reduced or eliminated to maintain specific survey standards. There are two types of errors, systematic and random. It is important for the surveyor to understand the difference between the two errors in order to minimize them. But what is systematic errors? Systematic errors are caused by the surveying equipment, methods, observations, and certain environmental factors. Under the same measurement conditions, these errors will have the same magnitude and direction. Because systematic errors are repetitive and tend to accumulate in a series of measurements, they are also referred to as cumulative errors. On the other hand, random or accidental errors are not directly related to the conditions or circumstances of the observation. For a single measurement or a series of measurements, it is the error remaining after all possible systematic errors have been eliminated. As the name implies, random errors are unpredictable and are often caused by factors beyond the control of the surveyor. Their occurrence, magnitude, and direction cannot be predicted, and errors of this type are compensating and tend to at least partially cancel themselves mathematically. Because the magnitude is also a matter of chance they will remain to some degree in every measurement. Although some systematic errors are difficult to detect, the surveyor must recognize the conditions that cause such errors. The following list includes several examples of systematic errors. Using incorrect temperature and or pressure observations. Not applying curvature and refraction constants. Using incorrect instrument heights and or target heights. Using an incorrect prism offset and using an imperfectly adjusted instrument. The effect of these errors can be minimized by properly leveling the survey instrument and targets, balancing foresight and backsight observations, entering the appropriate environmental correction factors in data collector, and entering the correct instrument heights, target heights, and prism offset in the data collector, and periodically calibrating the surveying equipment. If appropriate corrections are not made, these errors can accumulate and cause significant discrepancies between measured values. By keeping equipment in proper working order and following established surveying procedures, many of the systematic errors can be eliminated. Random errors conform to the laws of probability and are therefore equally distributed throughout the survey. Because of their random nature, correction factors cannot be computed and applied as they are with some systematic errors. However, they can be estimated using a procedure based on the laws of probability known as the least squares method of adjustment. This method computes the most probable adjusted values and the precision of the survey. The least squares method may also reveal the presence of large blunders. Common error sources are natural errors, instrument errors, human errors. Natural errors. These are caused by environmental conditions or significant changes in environmental conditions. Wind speed, air temperature, atmospheric pressure, humidity, gravity, earth curvature, and atmospheric refraction are examples of natural error sources. Many of these environmental conditions can be compensated for by applying a correction factor to each measurement. Commonly used correction factors are the parts per million or ppm and curvature and refraction constants. Instrument errors. Instrument errors are caused by imperfectly constructed, adjusted, or calibrated surveying equipment. Most of these errors can be reduced by properly leveling the instrument balancing backside or foresight shots, 
reducing measurement distances, and observing direct and reverse positions or double centering. Instrument errors can be further minimized by periodically calibrating surveying instruments, prisms, rods, and tribrocks. Human errors. Human errors are caused by physical limitations and inconsistent setup and observation habits of the surveyor. For example, minor errors result from misaligning the telescope crosshairs on the target or not holding the target rod perfectly plumb. These errors will always be present to some degree in every observation. However, by following established setup and collection procedures, many potential errors can be minimized. And that is it for today. See you again on our next video. Thank you for watching.